Whenever you're exploring your Minecraft worlds and you need to be able to get a way back to your hub or even your home or wherever you are at, then one of the easiest ways to do that is to set up a custom command block system. Well, maybe not the easiest, but one of the best ways, I would say. So you can just get right back to your hub, typing in that in chat, boom, there you go. You got yourselves right back to our hub. So let's actually get right into this. Most of the commands in this system are pretty much redundancies, so don't be too stressed that there's a dozen commands or however many commands I have here. Most of these are redundancies and I'll only be showing you a couple of them because once you get the idea, you can pretty much make anything using this. This is extremely useful and you can literally use it for almost anything. But first is actually be able to give everyone this book as you can see right here. So it will go right into their inventory where they need it to be. So obviously Obviously that is just a replace item command and you're doing at an entity at and then you know at a so at all players to replace their slot inventory with at the location of zero and the location of zero is right here this is one two three four five and so on and then from there from there we can give ourselves a writable book and we can give ourselves one of those at and then the item data is zero you know sort of like the item data for example wood is so like the item data of wood where oak is one and spruce is, I mean, oak is zero and spruce is one, that kind of deal, that kind of item data. So then let's actually get into our hub. So let me actually show you the different commands. So one way I can show you that is actually using one of my other command, one of the commands I've set up, which is the big long one, which is the help command. So if I actually type that in chat, there you go. Now you can see these are all the commands that we have set up except for slash help because that's pretty obvious since we just used it. So we have slash home, slash set home, slash hub, slash perk, and perk haste, which costs $10, and then slash survival rank, uh, well, slash survival, and you need rank three and above, slash creative, which you need rank three and above, slash night vision, which you need uh, rank two and above for, and you get it for 2,000 seconds. So that gives you all the information for different commands, and you know, this is slash hub, slash set home, slash home, slash perk haste, I'm not sure if I'll show that. This one's a bit too time consuming. Then these three are pretty well identical, so I'm gonna label them pretty much as one. That's why this is here. And slash help, which is basically just doing, you know, a like slash whisper kind of thing over to them. Let me see what that is actually doing. Yeah, slash message, you know, that's the closest player. So I'm gonna show you how to do this right here with slash hub. So slash hub, this is the basics of it. We're gonna be executing at the location of an item named slash hub, and we'll be teleporting th that person in the radius of three to the location of the thing. So I'm gonna be showing you that right in a second. And here we go, sorry for the small cut there. I need to make sure that I got this stuff done. Okay, so here we go. So that's what that is doing. So I'm gonna be doing that over here so that I can just auto fill it using slash tab. Well, not slash tab, but using tab. So here we go. So we can execute at a type, you know, type equals item. And I accidentally messed that up. Type equals item. And the name of the item will be obviously slash hub. And I'd recommend getting used to using the quotations because you're gonna be using that for a later use. So we can teleport to the closest player. I'd recommend in the radius of three, uh, just to make things, you know, easier so that uh, just in case if you die and other things like that. So then we're going to be teleporting the player to this location right here. And I have it set up with a tab so that it will work perfectly fine. Uh, but obviously you can just type it in normally. And then we're going to be going over to this command. And let's actually put this in. Here we go. Uh, let me actually uh, delete that first. So now we have this right here all fine and dandy. The next thing we'll actually need is this command. Now obviously this command is just repeating unconditional and needs red needs redstone this will be chain unconditional and always active because this one you need to actually kill the item so we're going to be killing at the type equals uh tape equals item name oops there we go item and name equals you know slash hub and there we go so then we're going to be putting that into here and we're going to be killing that item whenever we throw it out of our inventory so if we actually try this out it should work perfectly fine so let's go into here, slash hub, and for our inventory, there we go. Teleports us right away, right where we're supposed to be. Now that's the basics of how all of these work. It's pretty much that command, that same basic idea on all of them, except for doing slightly different things. So slash set home is basically spawn point because that's exactly how I like doing my um, home and you know slash home and stuff like that. So this is basically just setting the spawn point at the location of the nearest player radius three right there. As you can tell, you can easily do this. 
and you just kill it right afterwards. You already know how to do that because I just showed you with a slash hub. So this one right here is one thing that is a little bit confusing is that it actually uses the end. So we actually need to go to the end whenever you start setting this up. And sorry for the slight noise of the background. That's just because the end is very, very noisy. So here we go. So we can actually have ourselves a you know a little home right here. And um, all you got to do is just name an armor stand, you know, get an anvil, get a name tag, name an armor stand home in the end. It doesn't have to be the exact same thing. In fact, you can name it whatever you want. But basically, the main idea is that we have, actually, let me remove this uh, line right here. Uh, so one of the main issues that I used to have is I had this actually down here. But the problem was, whenever you teleported to the end, well, teleported to this armor stand, which is in the end, you would actually get instantly teleported back out because I have commands that do that. Um, whenever you walk into this, it will actually teleport you two blocks down from wherever you are. So that's actually right here, as you can tell. Now, the reason why this can be a very large issue is because whenever you are down here and you get teleported into this, you instantly get teleported into it Eve, because the commands are in the overworld. And I don't really want to go into grave detail, but basically you get teleported out of the end before the end is even done loading. So you'll actually load in the sky in the in the overworld. So pretty much what happens is you'll get the end sky in the overworld, which is not very pretty in my opinion. So that's why I have it standing up a little bit higher up. So you have basically time to fall so that you'll fall into the teleporter, which, um, which I'll show you actually in a minute. Let me show you how this command works. So slash home, all you got to do, you execute at the location of the item slash home. You already know how to do that, so I'm not going to explain that again. And you can just teleport the nearest player to, you know, the armor stand slash home. Uh, so then after that, what we're going to be doing, and sorry I'm not explaining too much of this. You guys should know how to do this because I just explained it a few minutes ago. So sorry about that, but if you don't know how to do it, then watch a different video. So anyway, so slash, and then you can execute another command to teleport any player that is within one block radius of that armor stand down two blocks. And then you can kill the item, you know, slash home. Then obviously, let me show you the one that's actually in the end. You can use a radius command for this one as well. So where you can just teleport any player that's in a certain radius of this command block. Um, but pretty much what I'm using is TP at A. So any player that is in direction Y equals two. So if they're one, two blocks above this, they will get teleported. But if they're like a block beside it, it will be perfectly fine. That's just so we don't have any issues with um, things, you know, overlapping and whatnot. And people accidentally getting teleported whenever they're in the end, just in case if someone actually manages to get to the end legitimately, and, you know, that kind of stuff. So that is super simple, super easy. But then there's perk haste, which actually uses a money system. And this I want to show you in a different video. So I'm not actually going to explain this if it's pretty much exactly how any shop system works, but I don't have time to explain it. And I don't really like, yeah, it's a bit more complicated. I want to make an entire video on that subject. If you do want me to do that here, I'll just show you the commands right now. So, and then I'll, if you do want me to make a full video on it, then definitely comment down below. So we're just executing at the location of the item. And then we're doing a test for the scoreboard. Uh, to see if it ha if you have more than ten dollars. If you have more, then it will remove ten dollars from from your score. After it removes the ten dollars from your score, it will give you a potion effect of haste. Then it will kill the item last and foremost, so that it doesn't spam. So that's exactly how that works. If you don't know how it works, then unfortunately, yeah, you're just gonna have to wait until I actually post a video on it. If I post a video on it, and if you do want me to post a video on it, definitely make sure to comment that down below. So. This next one I'll be explaining in a lot more detail because this is a bit more important, which is actually the ranking system so that certain people can use certain commands while other people cannot use certain commands. So for the most part, these three are exactly the same. So for this one right here, um, we can do execute at the location of the item, which is named slash survival, and we're testing our scoreboard. So scoreboard players test at P radius of three, and we're testing to see if they have a rank three or above. Uh, then whenever we go up to here, then it will be able to tell it will give the nearest player uh, Game mode survival in the radius of three So pretty much these two happen so quickly that it's going to be the same player So it should shouldn't glitch out and give someone else survival or someone else creative But most likely you're not going to be throwing throwing items at people That's the only way I could see that happening, but I really I'm not entirely sure uh, But it should be fine, but you know, oh well if it does happen then uh, you know They go into survival or creative mode. You could obviously just remove it um, right afterward so 
be, I want to be explaining a little bit about scoreboards. So pretty much if you want to set up a scoreboard objective, if you have no idea, then you're gonna have to watch a video. But if you just need a refresher, you can just add a scoreboard and you know name it rank and then dummy and then you can do, you know, call it whatever you want, display name. And then there you go. This will set up a, set up a scoreboard and then to actually have it display, then we can actually do, you know, objectives, set display. And I would recommend a you know, list because then whenever you go into here, you'll actually see it in the, the overall stuff, which is will show the rank. That's actually very useful as you can tell. Um, how that could be you could definitely see how that could be useful so I'm not going to explain that too much further then we can actually just you know set um, our player to whatever we want so rank uh, we can set it to four and now I have rank four uh, and then obviously I can I can set it to five as well pretty much anyone who has operator can mess with their permissions when it comes to the, these things so that's uh, probably one reason why you wouldn't want to make it's useful so that you don't have to give people operator, but at some point you do need to do that if you if they're going to be doing a lot of stuff uh, with the ranks and with a bunch of other different things. Um, so either way, probably a good idea. The next one thing that you can do is uh, with the scoreboard that was in there was actually players test. So we can also test to see if it does if it has something. So we can do like Mr. Jcraft. You know, we can test the rank and see if uh, the minimum, as you can see, this is min wildcard integer. So it's basically just the minimum number, the minimum number that we have in there. So let's say three. And then if it's above that, then it'll be fine. And let me actually show, show you that inside of a command block. Um, so if we go into a command block, as you can see right here, we can just put needs redstone right on it. And then we can put that over here and we can uh, paste that into um, this right here so we can test to see if this is true or not and here we go so as you can tell it is true but then obviously I can just do scoreboard uh, scoreboard you know players uh, scoreboard players mr. J uh, set mr. J craft and I can set that to two and now it should turn off once I actually set it to two correctly here we go set it to two and there we go now it's off and then if I set it to three it should turn back on and obviously all the way up to five or above it will still be working uh, so that's what that does um, so then that's pretty much exactly how all of this works right here and pretty much all that's doing with the test is making sure that this will only work after that because it is conditional and you should know how the conditional uh, command block works so I'm not going to explain that pretty much just means that this has to be true uh, pretty much has like a redstone output kind of thing then same the way with night vision you're just uh, doing the same thing except for with rank two and then you can do obviously night vision with an effect and you can kill it then when it comes to help obviously you're just giving a player at the nearest location to it uh, you know just a message so that is super simple so that's exactly how all of this works and as you can tell this was fairly fast and you can do so many different things with this if you want me to do more videos on the subject or more videos about different subjects definitely don't forget to comment down below uh, especially if you want me to do a full video on perk haste because there's so many different things you can do with that uh, but i will be doing a command block video on some shop commands so if you want to check out the next video i'll be making which it should be the next video i'm not entirely sure though it might be something a little bit different but i will be making a video series on actually how to make a shop command uh, for different shop tutorials and stuff like that so hopefully if you want to check that out definitely don't forget to subscribe or if you just want to uh, check out some of my other stuff, you know, check it out and hope you enjoy my channel and learn something new. Hope you have a wonderful, sublime and great day and God bless.